leadership? Uh, you know, are you looking to make a lot of noise on this issue, or do you actually think this is something that would pass? I think it's important for us to stand up uh, for legislation that uh, stands up for the health care of Ohio women. Uh, that is a very important issue to us. Uh, these budget provisions uh, attack uh, that basic right on so many levels, and uh, that's not what we stand for. So we took the time uh, to hear about and study uh, these provisions and are thoroughly convinced uh, that it's important that we put forward legislation uh, to repeal them. We will uh, try to get uh, Republicans on that legislation. Uh, there were a few that were outspoken in their opposition uh, to these measures, and we would welcome uh, their support for the legislation. I would just add, you know, the what we're proposing, we believe that the majority of Ohioans agree with, and that while we may have gerrymandered legislative districts that are electing ideologues that are out of touch with evidence-based medical practices, uh, it's our belief that the majority of Ohioans believe that they should be making their own health care choices with a medically trained physician, their own family, with their consultation with their own faith, as opposed to members of the General Assembly and the Governor who have no medical training, uh, in fact, indicated to us, I mean, the, the heartbeat bill and some of these other provisions were in the health committee. The proponents of the bill came into committee and I asked them, do you provide health care services to women? The answer was no. Did you consult any health care provider before you drafted this legislation? The answer was no. I don't think anyone believes that in statute we should start to dictate to folks who have spent over a dozen years getting bachelor's degree, medical degree, going through residency training, even longer if they went into fellowship training, what they should be doing, especially when you have folks who essentially may or may not have graduated from college, certainly didn't go to medical school, and they are writing in statute criminal provisions that could potentially put providers of health care in the state behind bars for doing what they were trained to do when they were in medical school. Well, today we will circulate a co-sponsor request among our colleagues and then try to get the legislation introduced uh, as soon as possible. Uh, part of the reason that we uh, conducted the hearings, even though the legislature isn't uh, in session, is because of the effective date of these provisions. Uh, it's important that we act quickly, and it's also important that we get the word out. There are still women across Ohio who do not know uh, that their health care uh, was attacked by Governor Kasich's budget. They don't know about these harmful provisions uh, on their health care, and it's important for us uh, to work hard to, to educate them about that and uh, now our effort to, to repeal those harmful provisions. Yeah, and I, w I will say that over the last several months, I've been reaching out to OBs in the state of Ohio to make them very aware of the fact that not only in this General Assembly, but the previous General Assembly, laws have been being passed that are going to increase the likelihood of lawsuits being brought against them, both civilly and criminally, and that they need to start talking to their patients and working with their patients to say, enough's enough. Get out of our office. We don't want you here. Uh, in fact, that's why these individuals went to medical school. That's why they're trained to make decisions that are in the best interest of their patients. How science became the enemy of the members of the legislature and the governor, I don't know. But I know for the patients of Ohio, they're sick and tired of it. And so again, I call on all patients and doctors to start signing up and saying, enough's enough. Get out of our exam rooms. We don't need you here. Okay, thank you all so much for being here.